All Things Motoring International is owned and brought to you by SA's most trusted online vehicle platform, Change Cars. Our name says it all. Whether you're looking to sell, need advice, need finance, or need insurance, Change Cars has you covered. Coming up this week on All Things Motoring International, Mike talks to the lead auctioneer of Creative Rides about their collection of some of the finest cars in South Africa. And we head to Timor Hall in Cape Town to check out some interesting classic cars with Ernest. This is a show that will take you on a journey through time. It's Sunday at the Classic Car and Bike Show here at Time Hall, and that means the old cars are out to play. Now we know Mike is the fan of the older classics and I'm more of a modern classic type of guy, but I've taken some of Mike's advice and I've decided to walk around here today and learn a couple of things from the older generation of cars. So join me as I walk around here and explore the 1950s, 60s, and pick a couple of different decades to find out exactly what was going on in that time and what cars were being built. Let's go for a walk. The 1930s and 40s, known mostly for the big one, World War II. But the 30s and 40s is also known for an incredible leap forward in design and car technology. And the traction avant by Citroën over here is one such car. Just look at those lines. And incidentally, this car is also front wheel drive. With the whistles going in the background, I found a friend here somewhere in the crowd, Ian Lopesha. This is a Peugeot 304. He just gave me a short history lesson on it. But I've never, ever seen one of these in the flesh before. Mm. For those of us that don't know this car, we've got the iconic 404 Bucky behind us. We love that one. But specifically the 304, what about it is so special and why have you got one here? The 304 coupes just come in in very, very limited numbers uh -huh. into South Africa. So they yeah. were sold here in the early 70s. This is a 72 model. With the few that they brought in, there's even less surviving yeah, still today. I loved what you said earlier on about sharing the passion with the public. You said that's why you're here. You want people to come and see. For me, like I said, this looks like the kind of car in the 70s that the good guy would be driving around, yes, arm yes, out the yes, window, yeah, feeling yeah. all cool and stuff. Yeah. It's a cool looking car, but let's talk about the technical aspects of the car. Front wheel drive car, one of Peugeot's first, other than, I think it was the 204 Coupe. And the sedan. And the sedan. And the sedan. So that was where the front wheel drive Genesis started for Peugeot, because before that, all of them were rear wheel drive. So this, yes. in the timeline of Peugeot, the brand, this must have been a big car. Yeah, it, it was, I think it was a breakthrough for Peugeot, and it was a strange thing for, for Peugeot owners, you know, to have an engine sitting the wrong way around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Driven yeah. by <laughs> front wheels. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, but yeah, yeah after it, it, it was quite successful, yeah. Uh, and then establishing the brands, the, the newer models after yeah. this. Let's talk about the styling of the car. The lights in front look familiar. What am I seeing here with the lights in the front of this car? You see already the design of the 504, mm. which was the successor car on the 404. Yeah. And also the 305. Yes. Which was the model after the 304. One more question, Ian. What is the drive like? These cars drive 
it's it's floating, so it, it drives very very comfortable. Peugeot is known for comfort, mm. uh, especially the seats sitting like in a couch. Mm. Uh, and, and velour, I see. Yeah, yeah. No, it's 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 really very very comfortable to drive. Light on the steering. Yeah. Quite economical. Yeah. And uh, and for the 1300, it goes. Sometimes to go forward you need to look backwards. And that's exactly what this car is here, a piece of history. And thankfully, someone has come to share it with us. Well, I can change the oil and I can change spark plugs. My name is Margaret Dunning and I live in Plymouth, Michigan. And I am a little older than some of you people. I'm 101 years old, and I'm still driving the Packard that I would like to introduce to you, a 1930 straight eight, 740 Packard. This is the dash light. It's got a little light here, and you can turn it. They call it the map light, and you see the light point. But that was an innovation. And I love to get my friends involved with them, particularly on polishing day. No, the old gal's getting a few marks on her. I wish that more people would really uh, fix up Grandpa's car and get them on the road and have some real fun. And um, I, I think it's a good life. Well, you know, people always say to me, have you lived in Plymouth all your life? And I always said, not yet. <laughs> and that's the truth. I'm still wiggling both hands. <laughs> Coming up after the break, Mike talks to the lead auctioneer at Creative Rides, Joff van Rennen, about a barn find that will be on auction in March 2024. Are you looking to sell? Visit Change Cars and click on the Selling tab. We are at the incredible facility that is Creative Rides in Bryanston to do an interview with Joff and Rhiannon, lead auctioneer of the business. But Joff, you describe yourself as more than just a lead auctioneer. You're the driver, you're the barista, you're the valuator, and you're very humble at that. I just enjoy being on the block auctioning cars. And it's a lot of fun. We look forward to sharing with you an incredible interview about, I believe, the most incredible collection of cars ever released in South Africa. Anyone who knows about classic cars knows the term barn find, but when you talk about a barn find, we're talking about a mid-1970s VW Beetle, a Mini 1275. Today, we're talking about something radically different, 200 plus barn finds. But let's start at the beginning, the town of Barclay East. You're probably thinking, where is that? I've heard of Barclay West, Barclay East, Somerset East, Somerset West, not even close. But Barclay East is in the mountains, there's no rust there. Nothing. It's not coastal. Nope. So these vehicles have been undercover for 40, 50, 60 years, some of them? We don't really know. Uh, there's, there's, a, there's a staff member who's worked for the family for nearly 50 years, and he thinks earliest is 30 years ago. You can't even see the color of the cars. Amazing. But when you open them, um, that, that smell of that brand new German leather hits you in the face. The, the dashboards are perfect. Incredible. The Becker radios are perfect. The, the ox blood, red leather. Uh, it's, it's, it's the most bizarre thing to see and explain. I've been an auctioneer for 30 years. Never seen anything like it. That is incredible. And you, when you came there and you saw the place, what was your expectations? The same now, goosebumps. Uh, expectations. Uh, uh, what have we done? <laughs> how, how on earth are we going to catalogue this? It's taken us nine months. Amazing. Uh, many visits, nine months. It's, it's so remote. There's not even cell phone signal there. That's why we haven't touched it. We haven't moved it. We yeah. haven't cleaned them. We've catalogued everything. We, we are auctioning them exactly as they stand. Now, we're fascinated by the cars, but the cars are owned by one collector. We would call him a collector. Yeah, Oum Louis. Oum Louis. Tell us about Oum Louis. He was a, a living legend, uh, much loved by all especially his family, a very private man. And um, unfortunately, when he passed away three years ago, the family phoned uh, uh, Creative Rides, our CEO, Kevin Derrick, who they know and trust very well. They've done business before and said, um, 
please come and see us. And Kevin. We've got something special for you. We just can't tell you what it is. He said, well, can you please come and see us? And then I got the call a few days later from Kevin. And uh, I said, I, I, I think there's a, a few cars to auction off in the free state. I said, well, how many? He said, um, he said I think about three or 400. And we were in the middle of level five lockdown in COVID. That is yeah, incredible. The rest is history. That is incredible. So when you've got 200 plus lots, this isn't a two or three hour auction. This is actually a week plus. Ten. Tell us about what's going to happen. We're switching it on, on Monday, the 25th of March. Online only? Online only. There's no signal at the barns for, <laughs> to have a live auction. We're switching it off 10 days later, on the 3rd of April at 8 p.m. And probably by then, I think, uh, with the extras, the family are going to add on next week. We're probably going to surpass 400 lots. 400 lots. Now, the buyers for this type of asset from all over the country, naturally, and all over the world. We've had calls from England. We've had calls from across Europe. We've had calls from uh, United States uh, and a huge amount of calls from across the country. Um, people wanting to know where this place is and how do they view. Um, most of those details we're going to release next week. But yeah, the, the, the response has been incredible. I think we released the teaser reel on Friday morning. That's already hit 10,000 views wow. um, in the space of a weekend. It's, it's just something you will never see again in your life. Uh, and it's, a, it's very, very special to see someone's love and passion. It's like walking into a time capsule. You, you've got to see it to believe it. Um, and I don't think we'll ever see this again. But now one of the things that I always want to know, 200 plus cars, I mean, I have a decent car collection, 10. I thought I had the biggest car collection in South Africa. Apparently I don't. How do you collect 200 cars? Apparently some of the uh, cars, the family didn't even know he had bought. No, the Barney Barclays they didn't know about. Um, that was his little secret stash. He, uh, he had a love, as, as does his family have a love for the, the, the love was passed on to generations. I don't know how you collect that much. <laughs> um, very, very carefully and over a very long period. We think it's it spans his, he must have collected over six decades. Correct. And there are some vehicles, uh, crank handled tractors from the early 1900s, all the way up to a couple of S600s to the early 2000s. So Amazing. it's a century of cars. So literally, as you said, over six decades, he didn't stop. Joff, you've been doing this for a while, yeah. a long while. And Creative Rides is the go-to, uh, if you've got an old car, your personal favorite from what you've seen there? Wow. Putting you on the spot, of course. My personal favorite is, is probably uh, something I saw in the, the big barn in Barclay, uh, a beautiful 300 SE black Fintel. That stands out. And, and this is what, late 50s, early 60s? I said probably. We, we can't even ascertain the year model of the cars. Um, probably because the, it's a Fintel. Um, it's a 300, you don't see many Fintel 300s. Of course. And that the inside looks and smells brand new. Um, and then there, there's a couple of other favorites which uh, are in his private barn, but you know, those are just too gorgeous even to mention. So I would say just keep, uh, keep watching your websites, cool. keep watching the streams, they'll be, they'll be released next week. If you've got a couple of million rand lying around or you want to buy all 200, probably 200 million rand lying around, go on to creativerides.co.za, register. Joff, speaking to you, you said you got goosebumps. Mm. I've got goosebumps just thinking about this. Can there be another barn find in South Africa bigger than this? Or can we definitively say this is the biggest? This is the biggest to date. Yeah. I've been auctioning for 30 years. I've never seen this. But, you know, that is a fact. Remember that it'll be close to 400 lots Amazing. in a week or two's time. And it is no reserve. Unbelievable. We've probably got Worm Pit watching this and thinking 200. Wait until you see my 400 I release onto market. Been amazing chatting to you. Wishing you and the team the very best. Thank you. It's going to be a great success. We're going to have some fun. Coming up after the break, Ernest is back at Timor Hall and goes through a few generations of classic cars. Did you know, America's obsession with pushing boundaries and their lust for the V8 engine led to muscle cars as we know it today. Since the Oldmobile Rocket 88 arrived in 1949 with a burly 5-litre V8 engine, gearheads across the United States have pledged their allegiance. Vintage European cars, on the other hand, tend to conjure images of open-top roadsters slicing through the Italian countryside while its occupants puff on cigars. American muscle cars relied on brute force, with their higher displacement V8 engines delivering massive horsepower. 
European cars, on the other hand, emphasized balance and precision, achieving remarkable performance through lightweight design and advanced engineering. The clash between American muscle cars and European cars in the 1970s was an unforgettable chapter in the automotive history. American muscle cars captivated with their raw power, while European cars enthralled with their precision engineering and refined aesthetics. Both represented unique automotive cultures and left their mark on the industry. Are you looking to sell? Visit Change Cars and click on the Selling tab. So crazy to think that wood was an actual feature on cars of old. Real wood. Our search for cars from various eras continues. And that's brought me here to Susan, Ernest and Hans with their incredible car with something called a dicky seat. Now, uh, I called you Ernest, but it's not actually Ernest, it's pronounced... Ernest. There we go. Okay, so Ernest, first question to you. What are you sitting in? Firstly, this contraption at the back here, and what is this? It's a 1935 Terraplane Dicky Seat Coupe. That sounds very cool. I understand you guys have quite a few of these, and Hans, you've got a collection of these cars. Me and my two sons. Yeah. Uh, Ernest and Rudolf. Okay. We have together, we have six cars. So why this specific car? Why the Hudson? Why this car? Well, I grew up with this era and uh, that's why we have this, yes. Wow. So specifically, you've now passed on the passion to you, Ernest. This car passion, you travel a lot of the times. You're not living in Cape Town at the moment. You're on vacation here in Cape Town at the moment. Is this a labor of love when you come back to Cape Town? No. Then I want to have holiday. Just, <laughs> just drive it and enjoy it. <laughs> so the restoration process is complete now. Hans, you've got a whole bunch of pictures in your book over there. Could you walk us through what's in the book there and what that means to you? I restore vintage cars for other people. The 37 terraplane bucky that's standing here, I restore that. It was a piece of rust when I started with it. One last question for you, Hans. How do you fix a car where there's only half a door left on the car? Well, you've got Someone to, else would throw it away. You've got to cut out the rust pieces and you've got to sandblast it and then you join in new pieces of metal and build, build it up. That's the only thing you can do. Wow. Well, thank you for going through the trouble and the effort so that the rest of us can enjoy these cars. We appreciate your, your labors. We appreciate your work. Now, I'm sure they'll be back for many more years to come. They call the 20s the decade of change and a lot changed in industry, in motoring but the one car that has stood out in that era is the Model T Ford and you've got a 1923 Model yes. T Ford if I'm not yes. mistaken this is Harry, a restorer and someone that has built this car from the ground up the pictures tell the story Harry, what happened? Man, I bought it from a friend of mine who uh, had, had stripped it down completely and uh, it was all in boxes all over the show and he wasn't feeling so well anymore so he said look I can buy it from him which I did I took a bucky load and a hell of a big trailer to get it all home yeah and I did that and then I started restoring it and uh, it took me about just on three years of labor 2700 hours roughly that's the big cost, isn't it? Yes, it's going to cost you to buy the car and get the parts, etc. But the cost is the labor and you have to do it. Yes, I have to do it. And uh, okay, you get a lot of help from friends and so. Yeah. But uh, basically you still have to do it because I do everything myself. The yeah. mechanical and the painting and the, uh, the uh, upholstery. Yeah. So what is your favorite part about this car? It's, the, it's, it's such a unique car because, I mean, you, you don't have gears uh, gear levers or accelerator pedals or anything like that it's all work footwork and handwork <laughs> and uh, definitely not a car for a drinking man <laughs> <laughs> do you think the drivers were better then than they are now it's very difficult to say you know because i mean there, there was so little traffic in those days but no you couldn't wheel spin with this thing and you had to be careful because it hasn't got the best braking system in the world so you must drive as fast as you think I can stop before I see you yeah, hit, yeah, yeah. hit the next thing. <laughs> and that makes it really interesting, yes. 
you got to mind your P's and Q's when you drive a car like this and you certainly got to mind them when you restore one. Harry's beautiful 1923 Model T still stopping traffic and still turning heads. It's the 50s and it's a time where the word modern gets used for some of the first times. It's also a period of massive growth and population expansion and the recovery from the war is in full effect. Then there was this, the console from the same era. This one specifically is a 1951 model belonging to Gordon Abrams over here. Gordon, you said this car was common. I don't really know what it is. Could you tell us out there what it is? Yeah, well, the reason it's common and not it was before your time, no doubt. Um, very popular back then, yeah. but few and far between mm. right now. Um, as the years go, so they go, modern cars take their place. Yeah. But us mad old car lovers, we find them, we restore them, and it's a way of life with us. Gordon, tell me what makes this car interesting because of its tie-in with Ford and the engine and the relationship with Ford. Well, it's a British Ford, number one. Uh, this is a 1500 four-cylinder motor which goes on to be used in the Cortina at a later stage in the 60s. Um, wow. So basically, it was your family car, your transport, your everything back then. A car the size was actually a six-seater, two, two bench seats. We think of modern cars as five-seaters or something else, but yes. six-seater was normal at a stage. Normal, normal because you got a back bench seat as well as a front bench seat. So if this has got a bench sheet, that means it's got three on the tree then? Because it's on your column, your steering column, they were referred to as column shift, yes. where other will call it fingertips. Yes. If you're changing your gears on the, on the floor, it's still with your fingertips. So fingertips is fingertips for what it's worth. Yeah. So Gordon, what about this car makes it special to you? And what's it like to drive? Well, my dad had one and um, it always rubs off from that, but it was a family car. You went on your holiday with it and the likes of that. There's a theory that goes along the lines of the 30-year rule. The car that you grew up with 30 years later, you find yourself being a collector. You've got a bunch of cars as well. Are they all from the same era? Or could you tell us a bit more about them? Uh, no, um, basically the same era being that um, 63 Zodiac. Yeah. Uh, British police used them as patrol vehicles. They also raced them. It's 2.66 mm -hmm. motor four box overdrive. Mm -hmm. So they were very quick. Mm. That as it stands, did we do a seven day trip? Was in October of last year. How many kilometers? Close to two, I think overall. Um, Mike is Fontaine, Beaufort, Prince Albert, Oatswaran and Mosselbay. 2000 Ks in a car from which year? I'm not even sure if we'll do that in a modern car. 63, 1963. Uh, my oldest car being a 1932 Auburn with a straight eight Lacomin. Um, well, an aeroplane uh, engine created by um, Lacomian aeroplane engine builders. Yep. Gordon, an interesting collection of cars, but we've now chatted about the 50s. Time to move on to one of the other decades. But I've got some homework to do because I want to find out more about Gordon's pride and joy over here. This is my idea of a fitting ending to the classic car and bike show. A classic Porsche that's been upgraded to modern features and modern standards. It's got modern tires, it's got racing interior, roll cages, etc. And although the purists might not fancy it as much as the original, this is what motor shows like this are about. Individualism, really showcasing what you are about when it comes to you and the reflection of your cars. This has been the Time of Hall Classic Car and Bike Show. My name is Ernest Page, and we'll see you at the next one. Coming up next week on All Things Motoring International, Mike heads to the Caravan Show at Gallagher Convention Center in Midrand to see what caravans and RVs are all about. And Ernest dives into the world of BMX and skateboarding at Alt X. Africa's Elite Action Sport Fest at the VNA Waterfront in Cape Town. I want him to make the first move, Jason. I, always may. I may not be the best looking, but I am the cheapest. <laughs> okay, let's go.
Let's go. But Joff, you describe yourself as more than just a lead auctioneer. You're the driver, you're the barista, you're the valuator, and you're very humble at that. I just enjoy being on the block auctioning cars. And it's a lot of fun. Let's see. Let's see. Let's do one more take like that. Sorry, I always say it's their show. It's their show. I'm interrupting yeah, yeah, their yeah, show. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. To you, Ernest. Er Ernest. Ernest. Yes, there we go. I'll get it eventually. <laughs> Gordon, you said this car was common. I don't really know what it is. Could you tell us out there what it is? Yeah, well, the reason it's common and not it was before your time, no doubt. Do you need any motoring advice? From where or what to buy and where to sell? Visit the All Things Motoring International website and click the Advice tab to ask Mikey. All Things Motoring International was brought to you by SA's most trusted online vehicle platform, Change Cars. Our name says it all. There is no safer online vehicle platform. That's not an opinion, that's a fact.